What's up, everybody? I hope you're having an amazing day. I wanted to hop on here and talk to you a little bit about this recent um, Hillsong controversy. Uh, as many of you know, there was a there was a documentary that's been released on Discovery Plus um, called "Exposing Hillsong." Sorry, I'm moving the computer around as I talk, but um. There's a documentary called Exposing Hillsong, and I took the time to watch it. I am not a heresy hunter. I'm too busy uh, studying the Word of God, getting in His presence myself, that um, I don't have time studying this kind of stuff most of the time, but I wanted to look into it and see if there's anything I can learn as a, as a pastor, as a leader, um, as, as an apostle. And so I took the time to watch it. It's, uh, I think it's three episodes. Um, each about an hour long, I think. Um, and it was really interesting. I've got a lot of feedback. And so I just want to start off by saying, I want to kind of tell my story with Hillsong. So you, if you know me, you know my story. I got saved at 17 years old. I had never heard um, modern worship music. I grew up on hymns and I, I got saved in an encounter with God and I discovered Hillsong. I really don't even remember how, to be honest, but somehow I came across Hillsong and uh started listening to their music um and i was blown away honestly i was blown away it was one of their earlier albums and just singing about the love of god about the cross um about the father heart of god worshiping him in in excitement and passion was captivating it really was um to this day beautiful exchange is one of my favorite songs of all time that album was great um i mean i i i shed many 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 tears listening to hillsong okay so my wife was saying the same thing we were talking about this last night that uh um, she had many experiences with god while listening to hillsong in the early years that she wouldn't be where she is with the Lord, without their music and their worship in the early years. Sorry, my voice is kind of raspy. I've preached a lot this weekend. So, um, so I said that to say I have a deep, deep love and appreciation for their music, especially 10 years ago. Um, I, to be honest, I think it's been very different in the last, um, you know, five years or more. Um, it's been uh, not the same. And I'll get more into that. So anyway... Um, yeah, so if you don't know, Hillsong is a, is, is the way people title it. It's a neo-Pentecostal, um, church, um, some would say neo-charismatic, uh, they have Assemblies of God roots. I don't know if there's still Assemblies, I've been wondering that for a while now, I don't know. They were Assemblies of God for a long time, if not currently, um, and they're probably the largest church in the world. Um, they have many campuses all across the world, and all together they are, I would say, without a doubt. I mean, I, I'd be surprised if they weren't. They're one of the largest, if not the largest, churches in the entire world. They have campuses in Los Angeles. They have one in Texas, multiple in America, New York, namely, um, and uh, South Africa, you know, they even have one in Ukraine. They, they you know, obviously have multiple in, in Australia where they're from. And uh, they really started the seeker-sensitive movement. And I'll just start off there. Uh, I shouldn't say this. You know, people have been seeker-sensitive with all kinds of different things. But um, at least in the modern day, the, the cool, um, dumb things down to get people to get saved is, is by and large, you know, started by them. Somebody would have done it. But they definitely help push things that direction. So let's just start there. Um, uh, and then I'll get into the documentary. I'm doing really a review here of the documentary itself. So my here's my thing. I'm not a heresy hunter. I'm not one that takes a long time to look into these kinds of things and all that. And I'm not one to just automatically call something a cult. Hillsong is not a cult. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and say that. I have done some studies of cults, of Mormonism, of Jehovah's Witnesses, things like that. Hillsong is not a cult. They've made a lot of mistakes. They're not a cult. Okay, let's just start there. But um, my biggest issue with Hillsong and with the Secret Sensitive Movement for a long time is it dumbs things down. And then just to get people to pray a prayer to become baby Christians... And then you have an entire culture of thousands or tens of thousands or millions of shallow, self-centered, 
uh, immature baby believers for the rest of their lives because every Sunday is another salvation message or um, even worse, another uh, another um, self-help, prosperity gospel, um, me-centered message. I saw a quote recently. I don't remember who it was from. It sounds like some Jordan, P Jordan B. Peterson would say, but it, I don't think it was him. Maybe it was him. Um, basically that manhood is having victory over childhood narcissism. Okay, Children are narcissists. Let's be honest. Everything's about them. It's me, 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 me. Becoming a man, or in this case, becoming a mature woman or man of God, becoming a, a grown-up son of God, um, is getting to a place where you're so free in the love of God that it's no longer all about you. That life isn't all about you. I actually start saying less of me, more of you, Jesus, right? And so, um, yeah, that, that's my biggest issue with all this. This documentary is clearly made by... I mean, I think it's clear. I could be wrong, but to, I would, I would, if I was a betting man, um, I would say that's made by unbelieving woke um, lefties, and there's a there's an agenda, and that sucks. And here's the thing: it, I don't know if this is from God, but I I felt like it was. I, I just kept like feeling this phrase when I was watching this: when the church doesn't judge the church, the world will. And uh, that's that's my thing. Is like I've been saying these things for for five. 10 years maybe even i mean i was listening to his song music back then but even at that time i was kind of like you know their messages are kind of seeker sensitive you know you're getting some old testament story and then applying it to you getting a job promotion or um handling transition well or you know something like that and um though there's some room for some of that um a steady diet of that will make the bible and the gospel and the glory of god all about you and instead of making it about him you know i, I have a uh i do my best anyway i think i'm pretty good at this um i have a lens when i read the bible and it's knowing him it's experiencing him right it's all about him the gospel is not about us it's about him at the end of the day and his glory his renown and um uh when we read the bible looking for things to make us um cooler better uh more successful more more of you know just things about us um it, it really becomes a narcissistic church culture and and i think unfortunately and i hate it, it pains me to say this but I think Hillsong has helped do that. And um, I, I think Brian Johnson, um, I think he meant well. I really do. I, I don't think he's an evil guy. Um, and I'll get more into my review, but I say this, I'll talk more about this towards the end. But, you know, there's a lot of conspiracy theory kind of things going on there, in my opinion, where they're like, well, really what he actually cares about. It's like, you have no evidence of that. Like, Brian Houston's not a cult leader. He's not, um, I wouldn't say he's even evil. I, I, I think the guy actually has a really good heart. I think he's made some mistakes, no doubt. Um, but I think he's a decent human being in a lot of ways. There's some things that I'm not so sure about, but I'm just giving him some grace there. And I'll get it, just hang on, you know, don't get too mad at me yet. Um, I think he's a decent human being. I think he genuinely wanted people to get saved and to... Um, meet Jesus, but the gospel is not all about heaven and hell. It's not. The gospel is Jesus living inside of you right now and proclaiming and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, which is here and now on the earth. And um, I think these guys just, a lot of these guys have just wanted to um, get people saved, to get them to heaven, and then move on from there, right? And so, um, also, I was going to say, uh, I did a video, I did this video earlier. But I was like really kind of tired and groggy still. And I was like, I better redo this video. I just seem kind of gruff. <laughs> um, and I was like, I'm just going to redo this. So I, this is my second take. But I said this earlier. Um, there's, a, there's a YouTuber named Ruslan. Um, I don't know that much about him. I found some entertaining stuff on there. But um, he shared an old message from Stephen. It was from Stephen Furtick's church. And Matt Chandler preached there. Matt Chandler is a uh, reformed Baptist mega church, but very by the book, word of God. Um, I don't particularly enjoy his style, and I, I'm very not reformed. 
Um, but I appreciate that he's not seeker sensitive. I appreciate that he is all about the glory of God. And um, Stephen Furtick, uh, for whatever reason, had him preach at his church. And Chandler did a really good job. I say for whatever reason because it's not really what Stephen Furtick's into. But anyway, we'll leave that alone for right now. Um, but, uh, he talked about how the gospel is about the glory of God. It's all about him. And uh, to that, I say, amen. I have a lot of similarities with reform people on that. And so anyway, I'll put that in the, in the notes, uh, in the description, I'll share that, that message. I think it's really amazing. Um, and, and really, really powerful and raises a lot of my concerns with the, the seeker sensitive movement. So anyway, let me pull up my notes here. Um, I took some notes on the documentary just to, you know, share. And, uh, I think the church needs to speak out on these things. And again, um, this is happening and bringing a, a black eye, if you will, to the church and to charismatics and Pentecostals, because we didn't deal with this in house 10 years ago and start speaking on this. And now it's public and they're bashing good parts of Hillsong. You know, there's, there's a big spiel in there. My wife especially took offense to this and I, I agree with her. Um, you know, they talk about how, you know, their music is all about emotions and just to get you to give more money or something. And it's like, man, like passionate, emotional worship is biblical. I just did a message series on it. You can watch it on the YouTube channel here at um, Heart of Worship 1 and Heart of Worship 2. Um, emotional, passionate, um, excited celebratory worship is biblical okay like i don't have much criticism for their worship music especially 10 years ago 15 years ago um I it was amazing i mean oh so much good stuff i surrender that song still brings me to tears i love that song um and so you know there's parts of like that where like at, and then at the end they talk about the seven mountains mandate and i'm like i agree with seven mountains mandate i'm a i'm a unapologetic believer in the seven mountains mandate at least in the way that i describe it there's people that probably describe it in different ways that i probably wouldn't agree with or enjoy um but uh at least the way that i describe it is that jesus told us to go into all creation and preach the gospel and creation and society it has business and has education and it has government and all these different areas and not all of you are called to be pastors or full-time ministry or whatever. Um, most of us are called to be veterinarians and doctors and business people and stay-at-home moms and um, teachers and whatever else. And so the Seven Mountains mandate to me, to me, is bringing the gospel, bringing the wisdom and the insight and the intelligence of God everywhere that we go um to to preach the gospel you know and to change culture and society for jesus not by force but by servanthood right so anyway there's things in there that they bash that i'm just like yeah this, you guys have an agenda you have an anti-christian agenda and you know whatever but you know they, they raise up good points and so i can't completely disregard that so anyway here's my review um i wrote this down becoming like the culture to change the culture doesn't work it's the definition of being lukewarm. It's like, you know, if you take cold water and put hot water in it to bring it to hot, it's just going to be lukewarm, right? And that's kind of what Hillsong did, you know? I think they just focused so much on the production and things like that. And don't get me wrong, I don't mind a good, um, good church pew and nice, you know, music and a good sound system. And, you know, I appreciate that my building has a nice AC system and... We have a little coffee shop. You know, I don't mind some of those things, but when it becomes all about that and then the message is watered down, you're in dangerous territory. You're really in dangerous territory. And uh, that's that's no good. Um, I wrote down loose living, uh, and then I wrote down clothes, money, and alcohol. So some of this is a little dicey. Let's start with alcohol. Um, I have no problem, and I, you know, I know so you know, get me in hot water in and of itself on both sides. But um, I have no problem with a man and a woman um, getting a glass of wine at dinner, a beer at dinner, you know, on occasion, things like that. I'm not a teetotaler. <laughs> um, teetotally no alcohol for saints is the old saying. Um, that being said, 
Um, it's to be in moderation. It's not to be used as a crutch, and it's not to, you know, people say, well, I just think we should throw it out completely. Well, Jesus didn't believe that, so there's that. But anyway, another topic for another day. Anyway, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. I'm just saying that we shouldn't make hard and fast laws that you shouldn't um, or that you should, you know, because the Bible doesn't teach either. So, um, but it's clear that Hillsong got really loose with it, okay? Um, you know, the Carl Lentz, that's the, the big issue that started all of this is there was videos and pictures that came out of Carl Lentz taking shots of, you know, hard liquor with Justin Bieber in clubs in New York. That is insanely stupid. Gosh, that's stupid. I mean, Bieber was like a few months before that taking shots off of a stripper's belly button. Like, sorry if you have kids around. Um, but I mean, not literally, but there's videos of him doing crazy stuff. Like I've seen one video in particular where he like starts chugging Hennessy, like, you know, Bieber's like coming out of a wild lifestyle. You're supposed to be discipling, calling him higher and you're going to clubs with him taking shots. Like that's so stupid. So stupid. Um, you know, he should have gotten wrung out, should have had to have had a public apology, the Brian Houston force right in that moment. Um, and he should have sat down maybe even for a couple of months, maybe, you know, as a disciplinary thing. Okay. So, um, I'm not a teetotaler. I'm not religious about alcohol, but I do believe that it's to be used with caution. Um, I would never, and I would highly encourage any minister to never, um, post on their social media about alcohol or drinking. Um, you know, if you're having a glass of wine with your wife, you know, maybe that's one thing. But, you know, posting on social media or allowing it to get out that because you're you're doing it, um, you know, drinking and, and, you know, things like that is just really stupid, just so dumb. There was another picture I think came up or was known about that he was smoking cigarettes and drinking really heavy Carl Lentz, the New York pastor. That's just really stupid. It's just really unnecessary. Um, I can't say a lot about this because I guess pretty private. Um, but I knew about some of this before it even came out. Um, I, through some friends, I'll just say it that way, um, who may or may not have some connections to that whole thing, um, potentially being vague here, but I promise it's very, pretty solid. Um, there was very compromising, and I'll leave it at that, very compromising pictures of Lentz floating around seven, eight years ago, okay? Um maybe six or seven, something like that. It's, it's been a while, but, um, anyway, I so said, let's say like, this should have been dealt with a long time ago. I definitely followed Hillsong for this. There's pretty clear evidence in the documentary that they knew about, um, the accusations with, with Carl and didn't really do anything about it. Um, you know, Joe Rogan, he's the most famous, uh, podcaster in the world, UFC, uh, fighting, um, announcer, broadcaster, um, even he covered this years ago where there was a picture that surfaced of Carl Lentz um, with uh, swimming trunks on and it was way down. This trunks were way down, no underwear underneath. It's disgusting, the picture. And the thought that any pastor, I mean, I've seen pastors, even ones that I like am somewhat connected with, post pictures of themselves with their shirts off, um, you know, showing too much at the gym, you know, both men and women do that kind of stuff. That's stupid. Like you will never catch a, see a picture on my Instagram or Facebook of me and my wife on the beach with no clothes on. Like, um, I, I just, I can't stand that kind of stuff. It's stupid. It's unnecessary. Oh, you're religious. You're you know, being legalistic. Call me what you want. Like call me old school. Um, but my wife's body is mine and my body is hers and nobody's going to be seeing me with a shirt off on social media. Okay. Like I can't stand that kind of stuff. It's just so stupid, let alone no underwear on and his board shorts or, you know, anyway, I'll leave that alone. Um, loose living with clothes and money. Yeah. I mean, come on, like Carl and, and some of these guys, um, they do a really interesting segment in the in the documentary with a guy who started the uh, Instagram page Preachers and Preachers and Sneakers. It's a cool uh, 
uh, account, I follow it, um, where people will t take pictures of, you know, I'm sorry to mess with some of your favorite preachers, but, you know, T.D. Jakes or Carl Lentz or, or um, uh, you know, Brian Houston or Judah Smith. And all these dudes are wearing like $10,000 shoes and, you know, jackets and man purses that are, you know, 10,000 bucks and belts, you know, that are $5,000. And it's just insane. Like, don't get me wrong. I like nice things. I like quality things, I should say. I mean, I'm wearing a North Face sweatshirt right now. Um, I got it on sale. I think I paid like 40 bucks for it. I like quality. Don't get me wrong. And I know even wearing like North Face would be like, um, you know, probably kind of bougie to some people, but, but, you know, like coach and like wearing these like crazy insane watches that are hundred thousand dollars. These guys wear the Hillsong guys wear is just insane to me. It's crazy. Um, I like quality. I'm a watch geek actually. Some of you don't know that about me. I'm a watch geek. I have a Rolex. Um, Somebody gave it to me though. I know I didn't buy it, and I'm not saying I never would buy one. I'm just saying the one I do have, I did not pay for. Someone to give to me, um, but like, there's a line between like quality versus like, you know, like a normal baseline like Rolex you're gonna hand off to your kids versus like an Audemars Piguet, which is like one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay, and these these bozos like you know, are, are wearing stuff like that, like not just like a $5,000 watch, which again, I, I know that's pretty extravagant in itself. And I think it's kind of a gray area in my opinion. Um, but dear God, like driving Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Bentleys and Rolls Royces versus like, you know, you won't go buy yourself a $70,000 um, Tesla, you know, like, cool. I'm okay with that. Um, you know, the will, of, if it's the will of Lord, I'll probably end up having a nice Tesla myself. I really like Tesla. I want to save money on gas, especially right now. Um, but Ferraris, Bentleys, that's stupid. It's just stupid. I can't see that kind of stuff. $10,000 sweatshirts. I mean, you know, these guys were wearing some insane, insane clothes. Uh, that part is really sickening to me. Um, here's a big one for me uh hillsong and again this is also you could kind of take everything i'm saying here about all the secret sensitive um churches to be honest but i'll leave that alone for right now but um you know unwillingness to speak on abortion is always one of my biggest hot but button um issues that bugs me about mega churches um you know it's like something happens and you know, race relations and, and that, all that happens and Black Lives Matter. And these guys will march with Black Lives Matter, march with um, and, and talk about and preach on for weeks on end Black Lives Matter, which is an organization that wants the destruction of patriarchy and the nuclear family, which is all biblical, by the way. Patriarchy is biblical. Just made five feminists uh, have a heart palpitation. Um, but, uh, yeah, patriarch is biblical. And so these guys will talk on black lives matter, which hates patriarchy, hates the nuclear family, hates biblical headship, loves feminism, loves homosexuality, um, loves transgender, everything. They'll, they'll publicly post that on their Instagrams, but has never spoken about abortion. I mean, Carl Lentz again is where Brian Houston should have stepped in a long time ago. Um, was on Oprah years ago, or no, he was on The View, and they said, what do you think about abortion? He's like, oh, I can't give an answer on that. It's more of a conversation, and I want to know your story. Look, there's no story that changes that um, abortion is murder, okay? So, unwilling to speak on abortion, the documentary doesn't cover that. I'm sure everybody making this documentary was totally fine with abortion, but um, the church shouldn't be, right? So, that's, that's like a huge issue for me. Um, the focus on stars and influential people you know, I felt bad for Justin Bieber for years because these guys, not just Carl, but a lot of those guys would use him. You know, he clearly needs to like be taught to not be a narcissist anymore, not make life all about him. And they're posting about him on their Instagrams nonstop. He's speaking and leading worship at their conferences and like two weeks before and or after, you know, he's sleeping with this model and he's, you know 
going to a strip club and then they're like posting about him all the time like dude like love him by taking him out of the public eye if you're really his pastor sit him down and help him get his crap together like i i don't know like i I, that always really bugged me how much like these guys were really just using bieber to get more followers i got in trouble years ago because there was a local church in my area who Sorry, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about this. I might get in trouble. But anyway, um, he was having in Carl Lentz and um, another big name uh, pastor. And both these, you know, Lentz and this other guy were discipling, you know, Bieber and an NBA star, right? And I publicly posted. They were promoting it. I kept getting the ads. And, you know, in a moment of frustration, probably I was like, this is stupid. Because I saw all this stuff coming, you know. And uh, sorry to be, I told you so, but it's true. Um, and I, I said on there, I, I posted on my own Facebook, I didn't use any names, but I said, hey, how about we start um, promoting and doing our, our promotion based on Jesus and his presence um, and the Bible and the word of God, you know, why don't we start promoting that more than we promote whose pastor is friends with Just, Justin Bieber and NBA stars and all that kind of stuff. And I got so much flack. This church, a lot of their leaders and people associated with them, very Hillsong type church, you know, blew me up in the comments and all this stuff. And, you know, said all kinds of stuff about me and whatever. It's, it's fine. And, you know, maybe I shouldn't have said that publicly the way that I did at the time. Um, But I just think it's very, uh, symptomatic of this whole issue right is is hillsong carl lentz even brian houston who i'm a little bit more partial to i'm a little more sympathetic to in some areas um allowing this kind of stuff you know brian houston as a spiritual dad as a pastor should have called out um carl lentz a long time ago the stuff should have never went as far as it did and said Hey, quit posting with Bieber. You're using him, right? You know, so the, yeah. And the documentary talks about how um, how they actually had like a VIP section in their church. Dear God, like James talks about this. Like Jesus talks about this. Like we don't favor people based on money, influence, power. Um, that is anti-gospel, right? And it's just that's disgusting to me. Um, yeah, the rock star status instead of the focus on Jesus. You know, I love old school Pentecostal folks. You know, you watch old videos from, you know, even like a William Branham, who was a very humble man, got off in some weird things later in life, but very humble for most of his life. Um, Catherine Coleman, you know, they made it all about Jesus. They made everything about him. And uh, we need to come back to that. Amen. We need to come back to a a day and a generation where it's not about who's here, who's cool, who's not. You know, Carl comes out, it's like, "Ah," you know, Brian Houston, it's like all about them. But, you know, Catherine Coleman, she come out on a stage and she'd start weeping. You know, she'd close her eyes and get down on her knees. Let's look at Jesus. Let's worship him, right? And that's what it should be all about. I mean, God will... Um, build ministries around people's personalities sometimes uh, because God's anointed them. They're being attracted to the anointing on their life. But there's a big difference between that versus like a cult of personality, right? I'm not saying they're a cult, but that can kind of like be kind of culty sometimes. Um, uh, right down, made by liberals who want uh, believers to not influence culture. And that's what really sucks about this documentary is there's a lot of things in there where it's very clear their narrative is that the church should just stay inside the church you know don't get out into society they're using Hillsong's moral failures and failures in leadership to um, kind of tell all of us to shut up and stay out of the world and so I want to encourage you like just because Hillsong messed up doesn't mean all churches are bad you still need to go to church you still need to find a good church to serve at uh, and to be accountable to um and that's really really important okay so i just want to be clear with that people should not use this as a way to just hate all institutional organized religions and churches and all that so um yeah people's willingness to hide sin seems like a really big issue in hillsong's uh culture um you know brian houston's case uh you know his father was a pedophile he was a pastor who was molesting i think they said like 
I forget. I want to put a number because I don't want to misquote and put it in your head. But he was mostly multiple kids. Multiple kids came, or they were adults later, you know, and came forward. And um, he had molested them while he was in ministry. And Brian Houston, you know, it's illegal in Australia and I assume America too. Um, I don't know if it's actually, I don't know if it's illegal in America, but he is being accused of breaking some laws in that he was hiding, accused of being, of hiding his father's sexual, um, pedophilia. If that's true, he should go to jail. I'd love to hear a response from them. I feel like a lot of what they said should have been like a little bit more like, um, a little more, uh, like uh graceful sort of of like at least in the sense of like wanting to hear their side their perspective in america you're innocent until you're proven guilty um and so i don't know i don't know you know what's the truth there i'm not going to make a huge indictment of of houston on that one it seems like there's probably a lot more to the story than what this documentary was even saying um in either direction you know so i don't know i don't know uh but if he's guilty then he should do jail time i completely believe that um but yeah i mean they knew about carl you know before and knew about allegations with him and should have done a much deeper look into that um i don't like how much the documentary um like i said earlier has a lot of conspiracy theories kind of where it's they don't give anybody the benefit of the doubt not that they should or shouldn't but at least have a little bit of like, well, I don't know, you know, kind of mentality. There's a lot of times where it's like, we know that, you know, it's like, we don't have any evidence, but this is what we know happened because this is what we think. And, you know, there's a part where like, they say like, the guy's like, I don't have any evidence, but I know that Car or Brian um, fired Carl because he was getting more famous than him. It's like, we don't know that. Like, that doesn't even make any sense to me. So I don't know. Um, all in all, I think the documentary was okay. I wish the church would handle these things on her own so the world doesn't have to. That's what's really sad about this. It should have been dealt with 10 years ago. Um, and I pray that we learn from it. I pray that seeker sensitive churches quit being seeker sensitive, start preaching the whole counsel of God, and that we would catch a flame for revival. I, I don't believe in these neo-Pentecostal, neo-charismatic churches. I'm unapologetically charismatic Pentecostal. And uh, we shouldn't be seeker sensitive. We should be sensitive to the presence of God, right? So I'm praying for Hillsong. I'm thankful for their contribution in areas that they contr contributed good things. And I really believe they did. I really do. Um, I believe that God did amazing things through them. And uh, I pray and I hope that their, their better days are ahead of them and that they would repent for areas that they messed up. So anyway, I love you all. I uh, hope this is encouraging to you.